We had a, a successful flight readiness review for Undock today with uh, NASA, an agency level review that went well. Um, and um, as, as we proceed into things, we'll be evaluating the weather. So kind of over the next 24 to 48 hours, we'll be looking at the weather, um, ensuring that we're, um, that we're really ready. We'll be doing that closely with NASA. Um, not only do we do these checkpoints, but there'll be a continuous monitoring process to ensure that, um, that we know that we've got safe weather to bring them home in, safe weather to, to splash down, and of course do the recovery operations and bring them back to land. Um, as part of that, I think we have a little infographic um, that we can put up right now, and I'll just talk through a couple of items on that. So you can see um, in this graphic, and this is one of the great graphics that are available um, online as well to, to check out, but the first uh, step that happens is you do a departure burn. Actually, I'm sorry, you do an undock, um, automated undock, um, autonomous undock from station. Um, just like how we did the autonomous docking and undocking for demo one, um, we'll do the same thing, uh, do an autonomous undocking for demo two for this mission. Um, then there's a departure burn, and then we move into the phasing burns. So depending exactly on the launch, uh, or the landing site, I should say, um, and the timing of everything, it depends on how many you know, orbits we need to do, what the number of phasing burns are, and the timing of those. So that sequence really depends on ultimately where our, where our landing sites will be and our landing timing. Um, once, we, once we're ready to actually come home, the next step is a trunk jettison, um, and then the deorbit burn. Um, and then, and that deorbit burn lasts a number of minutes. Um, it's actually one of the longest burns in the whole mission. Um, and then uh, we re-enter. And, uh, and re-entry, um, you know, there's the heat shield on Dragon. We've, we've used this, um, you know, built up on our technology that we've used for many of the missions um, on CRS. And of course, on the Demo 1 mission, we demonstrated it on this uh, Dragon 2 capsule. Um, because, you know, you get a lot of heating as you come in, and it's really critical that we keep the crew and the vehicle safe from that heating, the heat shield, and all of the thermal protection system that's all, all around Dragon will uh, we'll keep them safe. Um, we'll re-enter, um, and then the drogue parachutes will deploy, and then the main parachutes deploy, um, and then we splash down. Um, after splashdown, um, we have the, uh, our, the SpaceX recovery forces. I like to think of them as the SpaceX Navy. They get to go in and, um, and uh, recover the crew. Um, a couple of fast boats will go out, um, ensure that everything is ready to go, um, that, that, that the vehicle is safe to approach, um, checking for any of the hypergolic fuels, making sure there's no leaks, uh, everything looks ready to go. Um, and the other fast boat is there as a backup um, and also doing parachute recovery. Um, once the fast boat gives the clear, then um, the main recovery vessel moves in um, and will lift uh, the, uh, the capsule up onto the deck of the boat um, uh, into a nest and then um, uh, help uh, Bob and Doug uh, come out of the capsule and uh, check them out and make sure that they're okay. Um, you know, uh, once, once, once we have them on board, um, the vessel will take the time um, to, uh, like I said, check them out. And then, uh, and then, you know, within about four hours uh, or less, we should have them back to, back to land. And just depending on landing location and needs, we have the ability to bring them back very quickly via helicopter uh, or um, uh, come back on boat um, either way. Um, uh, and that really is kind of the whole process of the recovery. Um, ultimately, they get to, you know, once they get back to land and they get checked out there, they get to see their families. We have seven landing sites that we're going to be using, as Jim said, for the landing uh, as early as uh, Sunday. You can see these sites. They're spread across Florida, Pensacola, Panama City, Tallahassee, and Tampa. Those are, uh, Pensacola was there before, but we added the new sites of Panama City, Tallahassee, and Tampa since the initial flight readiness review, and then Jacksonville, Daytona, and the Cape on the uh, eastern coast of Florida. We added the Daytona site uh, after the flight readiness review and did uh, a bunch of work between NASA and SpaceX to ensure that site was ready. Um, over the next few days, we'll be carefully looking at the weather and getting ready for, uh, for the undock uh, and deorbit and landing. Uh, just a little bit of the sequence uh, for the earliest opportunity would be to undock on Saturday. The crew would wake up about 7.30 central time uh, here in Houston. We would close the hatches about 4.30 on Saturday and undock around 6.35 p.m. central. And we have about a, an hour or so undock window. And then that would set us up for our first uh, landing opportunity on Sunday, deorbiting around uh, 12.56 uh, central time on Sunday and then landing at about uh, 1.48 p.m. Central. Um, we're gonna watch the weather very carefully. You know, we have a series of sites and, and many days uh, in the future 
uh, if we don't undock uh, on Saturday uh, to come home on Sunday, we would move that undocking to Monday.